Alan, I've got a I've got a gimpy dog right now. Full leather and everything. Yeah, my dog Canela, which is uh cinnamon in Spanish, because we're very mucho bilingual. That's a very talented dog, Rob. <laughs> yes, yes, she barks in several languages. Uh-huh. Uh, she's got a cone right now because she had surgery on the dog equivalent of an ACL. Her football days are over. I'm so sorry to hear that. That's done. That's done. Yeah. And uh, she's moving on to coaching. But they don't get used to cones ever. No. And it is the dumbest thing that every time she goes in and out of her crate now, she looks like a stormtrooper on the Death Star. It's just like, boom. And then she looks at me like I yes. did it to her. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like her master's voice, but she's inside the Victrola. <laughs> huh? 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 It's time. Time for a thrilling story of romance, adventure, mystery. Anything with an expired copyright. It's time for another Interrupted Tale. Hello, and welcome back to the show that usually ends. It's another episode of Interrupted Tales, the podcast where my friend and I take turns reading stories to you, the listener, while the other person constantly interrupts. As always, I'm joined by my pal, my principal pal, my <laughs> principe pale. This is the Latin. This is, it works. Rob. Hello, Alan. Feeling feeling spicy like the Latin person I am. Vene vidi vici, Rob. Isn't it weedy weedy vici? Isn't that a... Is it actually a W sound? You know, I think there's a lot of debate. <laughs> and it's, it's, God, it's hilarious too. Boy, you wouldn't believe what these Latin language scholars get up to. <laughs> oh, man. Late Ooh. at night drinking mead. Wine. Wine? <laughs> They're not Viking scholars. Well, some of them are bound to be. I mean, just statistically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, uh, this week, well, we've got... Another story is called Alice Sit by the Radiator. Yes, Alan, I wanted to let you know that your uh, your recent critique of the titles of stories that I've been selecting mm-hmm. has been uh, it's been spotty. Apparently, stories like called Like a Stick are are not exactly setting the world on fire. So I wanted right. something really grabbing, and so I found Alice Sit by the Radiator. Oh, a lot of implied action in that title, Rob. I is mean, it a command? Is it a description? I don't know. Uh, it is by Edwin Justice Mayer. Mm-hmm. And it is from the July 1919 edition of Live Stories magazine. Or perhaps Live Stories. Perhaps that's the <laughs> command, Rob. Don't just read them. <laughs> Stories live. You sit by the fucking radiator as much as you want, and you don't let anybody tell you different. If your name is Alice, only Alice is allowed. Just Alice's. Just, Just Alice's. Alice's. Uh, all right. Well, um, sit by the radiator, not too close. Let's not jow it up. And uh, enjoy this week's tale. I shall get you a servant today if it, if she costs $100 a month, Jones told his wife, his young wife, in the fiercest of accents and with the most benevolent of looks. That's right, she, not it. No robots working in my house, milady, unless they are sexy robots. It's just like babysitters, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to get too sexy a robot in your house, right? That's just inviting trouble, right? I mean, but Alan, why, why spend all the money if it's not sexy? Jennifer Garner would advise against having a sexy young robot, is all I'm saying. Well, Ben Affleck isn't that young anymore. I'm not sure where it really fits, but okay. Uh, he's sure where it fits. 
he he fits it everywhere. <laughs> yes, it's true. Having delivered himself of his intentions as a good husband should, he kissed his wife on her lips, on her young lips, and strode out of the house with all the dignity as possible for a man to assume when he carries an umbrella under his right arm. His young umbrella. <laughs> And is in a hurry to catch the 825. Sure. No, oh, you can tap that right. At the 825? You're going to tap the 825? Um, the whole train? At 5 o'clock that evening, he triumphantly returned with Alice, who had asked only $50 a month. Well, they were hiring a maid, not a hostage negotiator so you know i get it but still alice if you don't treasure yourself no one's gonna treasure you uh <laughs> she, she just wants some pizzas while she figures it out okay she just she didn't mean for this to happen uh, maybe just order some pizzas uh and she'll uh she'll clean the bathroom and uh and we'll see where it goes from there it's a good call actually She's going to need a helicopter, though. What? <laughs> That's definite. Oh, no. Alice was small. Petite is the word, I think. Oh, come on, narrator. <laughs> Pick an adjective and grow a backbone. It's beneath you and the fine people of Live Stories magazine to not to play coy. Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> was petite a new word at the time? I mean, she wasn't petite dejeuner. Right. Un petit déjeuner? No. 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 Un croissant? No. 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 A uh, café? Um, non c'est plus. Okay, that sounds good. I'll have that. Okay. Mm. And she had fine, exquisitely curved lips. Red lips, they were. Young lips. Well, I mean, naturally, right? <laughs> I mean, they. she didn't get them grafted on from... You know, a more mature lip set. <laughs> lip graft. Yeah, lip grafts. They weren't common back in the radiator <laughs> days. And she had other accomplishments. Oh, a degree in accounting from Wharton? Yeah, that's why she asked for several pizzas instead of just one. <laughs> Among them, two blue eyes, the exact color of the lampshade in the Jones parlor. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you said accomplishments. Uh... Was irony invented right around this time? Yes, right after the radio. It was all, it was, it was quite a creative time for mankind. The radiator. <laughs> Radios. Lip graphs. Irony. What a decade. Blue eyes. The exact same color. <laughs> yeah. Man, the guy that invented blue eyes. He didn't, he didn't get the patent. Yeah. yeah and then they, they just, they, they started putting blue on everything. <laughs> Idiot. He did, however, know what it was like to be the sad one. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I know. Sure. You you, you could apologize. Yes. Yeah, the... <laughs> yes, I do. I apologize yeah. to you. Okay. All right. Good. Personally. And a very blue lampshade it was. Mm. Yes. <laughs> blue. Also, she had fair skin and white hands. And as you can see at once, she looked much more like a maid in a Sardot play, like the one that is dusting the furniture when the curtain goes up. Oh, like someone from Fedora or La Tosca or one of the lesser known works of Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, hello. Okay, let's hear it. Oh, hello. It was a drive by fruiting. That's, uh, that's Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. There's no denying that. No denying it. Mm. You've hit it. <laughs> I'm sure that the state of Robin Williams will be Aww. suing us at any moment. Aww. Bring it, Robin Williams. The ghost of Robin Williams shows up in my room tonight. Oh. Okay. Uh, does a good tight 25. It's not tight, no. <laughs> Oh, it's it a rambling rambles, 25. rambles quite a bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then, like an honest, too inefficient maid, uh, presumably of all work, receiving the insidious sum of $50 a month for her services. As Mrs. Bellers, uh, Mrs. Bellers was the mother of Mrs. Jones, not 
the mother of Mr. Jones. Oh, my God. Story, we know how names work. Thanks. Said, a few years ago, she would have been glad to come for 16 a month. <laughs> mm. If you get paid for it, very likely she would have been. When Alice was alone at last in her room on the top floor, her first sensation was one of chilliness. Oh, it was the first sign that she wasn't really alone. Mr. Freeze is hiding behind the bureau. I still okay. see you. Yeah, okay. That Mr. Freeze. Okay, all right. What killed the radiator? The Ice Age. You got anything on uh, lips? <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> no. She was cold. And curiously enough, she was lonely, although there was a whole house full of people below her. Yes, a whole house full of people who would be horribly insulted if their lesser even spoke to them. How could she be lonely? Right. <laughs> she should be counting that $50. <laughs> oh, they didn't prepay. Oh, no, okay. no, no. Well, she gets she... that at the end of the month. She should be dreaming of counting it then. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Nevertheless... She sat disconsolately at the edge of her bed and looked about her. The size of the apartment did not permit any far gazing. That's, can't see the, the, the entire Orion belt from there, I guess. <laughs> from the apartment. Nope. Hello. Oh, from my apartment, I can see Mount Kilimanjaro. Yes. Well, that's good. Maybe you should shut the curtains. Who knows who on Mount Kilimanjaro <laughs> might be looking in. <laughs> Any more than the earth permits man to look far when, like Alice, he is young and curious and hot and cold at once. What, wait a minute. What? Is this like a, the seven ages of man or something? What is I, I, see, I thought young and curious and hot and cold sounded like an early Ang Lee movie. <laughs> or maybe Russ Meyer. Hot caution. <laughs> I, I saw Hot Caution open up for live in the 90s. They were great. You sexy thing. <laughs> she felt like someone just born thrust onto a circumscribed earth from remote and freer worlds. Her mental orbit, she felt, must henceforth... This really, I'm, this it's, is a lot of deep, yeah. mm -hmm. still waters with this maid. Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy's got a thesaurus. He's not scared to use it. Yeah, he looked up what a synonym for small was and came up with teeth, so... <laughs> well, he thinks. He thinks. We he got, hasn't committed to it yet. <laughs> we got his whole process <laughs> down. Her mental orbit, she felt, must henceforth swing between these four bare walls and no further. Every moment that she sat on the edge of the bed, the walls grew nearer to each other, or seemed to do so. Is this turning into a Lovecraft story? Because... If Alice turns into a frog person, I am into it. Uh, Alice sits by the flower. That amazing complex world where even knowing about walls drives you slowly insane. <laughs> and if you have the slightest inkling of crown molding, you oh. will never be able to hear anything but the chanting of the adepts who summon the... <laughs> Quarter round masters. <laughs> Dusting the crowd molding of madness. This was all a great pity for Alice had once loved the fairies and believed in them. And while she was wiser, now that her childhood lay behind her, she had always had a haunting doubt telling her that there really are fairies on earth, or at least one fairy, a good fairy. But what fairy, good or bad or indifferent, ever came up to the top floor? I don't know, the Tooth Fairy? Mm, Santa? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is not hard to think of, narrator. Sure, yeah. I mean, for Santa, I mean, that's that's like easy. That's yeah. like uh, That's first less floor, effort. man. That's first floor. Yeah. And then for the Tooth Fairy, I mean, like the tooth to dollar ratio. I mean, she her markup is huge. Of course she's going to go up a few flights. Yeah. Yeah. That's tooth. Those teeth. There's money in those teeth. Oh, yeah. I mean, why else would she collect them from children? <laughs> it's, a large, it's a large operation to it's undertake without some be good a return. Booming economy. There must be rare earth minerals. 
just trapped in those things. There's gotta be, is there something we can do? Are we taking stem cells from children's teeth? Are we doing anything? Is there anything we can do with them? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Because my necklace is just like hanging out. I, I mean, like, <laughs> it's not even a good look. It's like puka shells. People look at you with a child's teeth necklace and they're like, oh, that guy's a douche. You get snagged in your chest hair, too. It's just Ooh, not oh, working God. for you. Mm. Yeah. And everyone can hear you walk into a room. It's like a bag of pearls. Alice was so cold by this time that she slipped over to the radiator and sat down on the floor and leaned against the one warm and therefore friendly thing in the room. Hey, hey, uh, I'm sorry, but, uh, lady, I'm, I'm not really a touchy radiator. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't mean uh, to. Do you mind leaning on the dresser? That thing will let anyone lie on it. Oh, God. No, I I got stories about that dresser. The yeah. one, the one that uh, Mr. Freeze is hiding behind. Yeah. He's not just hiding behind there. It's okay. it's a scene. All right. After a while, she ceased sobbing. At least she ceased when she fell asleep. Jeez, bleak. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty bleak. This morning, said Mrs. Jones sotto voce to Mr. Jones at dinner. She ruined the eggs. At lunch, she burned the liver. And look at the chicken. I'd be too embarrassed to show it unnailed it. Look at the chicken. No, don't. Don't look at me. No. <laughs> no. Please. No. Her worst half dutifully looked and saw that at once that harm had been done to that bird. <laughs> it did not look healthy. Hey, maybe it just had a long day and just feels fried. Huh? Uh uh? Come on, give, give me one wing in the air. Come on. I don't think I'm going to do that, Ron. <laughs> I don't think that Popeyes or KFC would do you that courtesy. Mm. Chick-fil-A, maybe. Maybe, but I don't know if I want it, so. Yeah. That's right. It did not look healthy, and it did not possess the robust appearance which it had when Mrs. Jones bought it. Living. <laughs> I'm not sure you can blame the maid on that one. No, you know what? I think, yeah, yeah. There's always going to be a noticeable difference between it's, the it's, two. It's unmistakable, Rob. Yeah. There's... <laughs> Look, you're never going to go like, wait a minute, is that chicken cooked or not? Is right, it? right. Hmm. I, I'm worried, you know, because I always overcook chicken. You know, I'm like, if it's a little bit pink or if it's still crowing, you know, if it's if it's still running around, I, I'm just a little concerned. I'll, I'll put it back in for a couple minutes. Oh no, no, I like mine rare. I like I like my chicken rare. I want it to cluck when I bite into it. Indeed, it was shriveled and mean looking, and wan and tough appearing all at once. Ah, like Maggie Smith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's the she's the chicken of actresses. Tough old bird. <laughs> As far as the chicken was concerned, nothing would ever be the same. I've seen things, man. <laughs> I went into the oven and I came out the other side. It's all lies. These aren't legs, man. They're drumsticks. Drumsticks. If Chicken Run was a serious war film. Chicken Run is a serious war <laughs> film. It they is. just gloss over it, Rob. <laughs> Lot of dead chickens in that. Lot movie. of dead chickens. Yeah. Lot of dead chickens. Yeah. It can't be eaten. It's burned beyond recognition, Jones said in a dreadful voice. And it was. No rooster would ever claim it now as his own fair own. Uh, that's why they call them cocks. The Joneses? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we do? Do, said Mrs. Jones. She's such a nice girl and so pretty. She must have learned to cook from a cookbook, Jones said. And not a surprisingly good one like Chrissy Teigen's. More like something by Jamie Oliver. Yeah, no, I think the problem, I tried to follow his cookbook and like, yeah, yeah. Everything ended up being peas with lemon squeezed on top. So I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. It's like yeah. one one flavor profile. No, no, you, Every, you, 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 you take the peas, you take the uh -huh. peas, and, and you put the lemon on, and, uh -huh. and it tastes it tastes crap. You squeeze the you lemon know? on. Yeah, you put you squeeze the lemon on, like, like you're easy. squeezing your girl or your mate. Yeah, 
I'm from England, I am. You, you sure are. <laughs> I like to cook what what? She is a nice girl. Everyone admitted Alice was a nice girl, even Mrs. Bellers. Mr. Jones could never decide whether she thought herself Edith's mother or his mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's Edith's mother. Is, is this house an ESL camp on the side? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> even Mrs. Bellers admitted Alice was a nice girl and a pretty girl, but above all, nice. Nice. And petite. <laughs> nice and petite and young. And small. I mean, petite. Petite. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> Let me think about it some more. Call your editor. See sure. what he says. Not much, apparently. <laughs> oh. I am paying her $50 a month, said Jones, speaking in a tone of voice, which left no doubt that he was thinking in long words and not in short numerals. All right. Alan, um, serious mm -hmm. question here. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? Um, thinking in long words. And thinking not in long words. In short numerals. Uh, to describe his tone of voice. He's thinking about it the way I thought about Super Bowl 55, which was why they put a trophy in the middle oh, Alan, that yeah. made it look I like. Was... Super Bowl I was so, 54 to any fucking yeah, reasonable yeah. person in the world. I thought it was 50. My wife asked me, like, oh, yeah, which one is this? I'm looking at the screen. I go, it's 54. It says right there. I taught my kid, asked, what are those things? I was like, I explained Roman numerals to him. They are so hard to get, said Mrs. Jones. Her husband sighed. They are hard to get. You know, Alan, they should just use do what I do, which is uh, mm. use fetch.com. And okay. uh, when the person shows up, you pretend you're lost your dog and okay. say, hey, if you could just clean up, uh, maybe do some light dusting in this room while I go and check in the basement. Um, and then, boom, it's much cheaper. Uh, what? What is fetch.com? <laughs> It's where you, yeah, it's the gig economy site for hiring people to do shit for your pets. Okay, stop trying to make Fetch.com a thing, Ron. <laughs> now, Alice knew perfectly well, as well as the Joneses, you and myself, that she had maltreated that chicken. Hashtag justice for chicken. That's definitely not a Chick-fil-A slogan. That is uh, definitely the White Castle slogan now. I oh. Think. They've, they've taken up the opposite side of the campaign. I'm surprised they changed it from, hey, we're still here. Hey, we still haven't figured out what cheese is. <laughs> hey, this thing that's kind of like meat has holes in it. That's weird. Hey, do you like really moist buns to the, to the point that it's <laughs> mostly water? Do you like not so much the taste of food, but the feeling of having a lot in your mouth? Hey, remember when we had that movie that mentioned us? God, could they make another one of those, please? <laughs> so as soon as she placed it on the table before the young couple, she fled upstairs to her room and waited for the fateful summons she was sure was coming. She fled to the shelter and friendship of her one good friend in the house, the radiator, and sat down next to him. She was sure it was him, with palpitating heart and quick breath. Uh, listen, that lady, mm. you're nice and all, but I told you, I just want to remain friends and occasionally make very loud pinging noises. <laughs> I'm not ready for commitment here. It's the middle of winter, and I got a lot going on in my boiler, so to speak. That's, that's his one joy in life. Get <laughs> that ping off. Right when things get quiet, boom! Oh, good. But no word came from downstairs. Instead, after a while, she heard a door slam. The Joneses had gone to a nearby restaurant for supper. Ooh. Yeah. Perhaps they had not called Alice down because their hearts were heavy within them. The chicken was not, however. <laughs> As Alice saw when she crept downstairs and into the dining room. Well, well, well. I thought you'd be too embarrassed to show your face around here after what you did to me. Pagok! 
twirls around with a little little hamster on its lap, petting it gently. Mm. Wow, okay. wow, wow. On its lap, huh? <laughs> Chickens have laps, sure. I mean, that's what I, I like to order, though, when they're like, you want white meat or dark meat or lap meat? <laughs> Boy, it's, it's, it's just not even a choice. Why, why oh. bother asking me? Oh, oh, lap meat all the way. I'm hungry, said Alice wistfully. But I can't eat that. Alice was not altogether impractical. By and by, she went back to her radiator and considered her future. Mrs. Alice Radiator. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah. Wow. Me and Radiator are going to buy a house together. I mean, it has sure. to be this house, but, you know, whatever. Well, yes, he's, he's sort of uh, attached to this house, you know. Not, he's not going to let it go. Deep roots. I can't sew, she thought. And I can't learn shorthand. And I can't cook. She closed her eyes and smiled. I can't do anything, she said aloud. I'm useless. Which was ridiculous, as anyone could see by looking at her. Remember, pretty equals useful. Yeah, she's pretty useful. <laughs> I can't go back home, Alice continued aloud. If I keep on cooking, I shall inevitably commit manslaughter. Ha. Which, <sighs> it's like your shopping list is way off in the first place then. Are we out of Deadly Nightshade, or do we need more? That way, you can never, never have too much Deadly Nightshade. You know, with the pandemic and everything, you order Deadly Nightshade, and they got to substitute button mushrooms. That's not going to do the job. <laughs> it's just not the same. Give me the organic. That's fine. Charge me more, but I need the Deadly Nightshade. Sure, yeah. By tonight. <laughs> I mean, seriously, guys, I got about an hour here. I need a one hour delivery window. <laughs> don't don't just like tap the 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 screen door, okay? I may not hear that. No, I want it handed to me. Well, I don't want it handed to me. That's well, no. not safe. <laughs> That's not safe. That's you want to be safe when you're handling the deadly nightshade <laughs> mushroom. If I keep on cooking, I shall inevitably commit manslaughter. Mr. and Mrs. Jones heaved a sigh in the restaurant and agreed with her. I'm, I'm glad to hear the listening device is working. Well, the radiator is oh, bugged this. up. <laughs> I shall have to get married, said Alice, sit by the radiator. Uh, look, look, I, I like you. Like you, Alice. But I'm a loner, mm -hmm. a rebel. Wait, are, are you crying or you. is it my steam? <laughs> I can't tell. Opportunity rang the doorbell once, right there and then. Is neither of them at home, said Opportunity, who turned out to be an eligible-looking young man in a great coat and small hat. Oof, oof, that's got to hurt for that hat. I mean, it was probably a pretty great small hat, and that, it's just dumped there after the coat's being held up on a lofty position. I'm going to pass by the wordplay, Rob, and get, get right back into the scrabble of this uh, story here. Uh, Alice reaffirmed the absence of her lord and lady, the Joneses of suburbia. <laughs> Zoe Deschanel was in that? or is that Joneses the, of suburbia? Yeah, I think yeah, it was Jones her and uh, Zoe Deutsch. Uh, yeah, and Zoe Kazan. <laughs> Zoe Kazan, yep. So, yep. And Delia Kazan, actually. Oh. It's quite a cast. But they invited me to dinner, said Opportunity, pleasant but somewhat puzzled. Why does this keep happening to me? This is the third time this week. I'm quitting this threesome Tinder, I swear. Is that, a, is that like a separate app or <laughs> you got to sign up for a beta or is um, I'm just, uh, I'll just say, you know, I'll do the research myself. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. They must have forgotten, said Alice. You see, I, I burned the chicken. And do you always burn the chicken? Asked the young man facetiously. Always, said Alice, and burst into tears. I just like those chicken breasts, white and dry and tasteless. <laughs> it is a commonplace for opportunity to knock at the door. It's a rare thing for opportunity to eat 
a burnt chicken. Mm. Yet that is precisely what Opportunity proceeded to do after Alice suddenly let loose her emotions, in vain for her to protest. I was invited here to supper, he said firmly, releasing her from his arms, and here on the table is a chicken. Burnt? Uh, what of it? Do you know that one of our revolutionary heroes lived on burnt sweet potatoes? Well, he did. And did you know that in England everyone only has one spoon? And that's your spoon for your entire life. And if you lose it, you starve to death unless someone in your family wills you their spoon. And they have spoon millionaires. Why, he would have considered burnt chicken a delicacy, and very likely it is. Alice waited on him, and laughed at him, and with him, and a very good time was had by all. Not the chicken. Uh, I think the chicken was pretty put out. I'm just guessing in his emotional state, including the radiator, uh -huh. which, which could be heard ticking, ticking, ticking from above, which is the way radiators chuckle when they're happy. Or that's the grinding of radiator teeth as their jealousy is about to turn to bloodlust. It's one mm -hmm. of those things for sure. Right. Boiler explosion at local house. More <laughs> details in the morning paper. Radiator says they deserved it. <laughs> wow, the radiator got out, huh? The boiler's in the basement. Radiator's all the way up on the third floor. Who could get up there, Alan? Oh, boy, he's got an alibi and everything. <laughs> As usual, it was cold in the room, and Alice sat down on that clean, warm spot on the floor, which was heated by the nearness of her good gray friend. Skeletor. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't want to eat burnt chicken. Orko, no! Now, as has been said, everybody admitted that Alice was a nice girl. And with her lovely body sloping against the pleasantly warm radiator, she would dream the sorts of dreams nice girls dream, which, of course, are nice dreams. My radiator, my radiator, is a private kind of place. Nice. Uh, things would take on a rosy color. Harsh things would soften and undulate and renew themselves with kindness and charmed images would rise in her eyes in her silent communion with the firelight, as it was to her, of the radiator. So this is the part of the story where the radiator commands her to kill for it, right? I think, yes, but actually the radiator is being controlled by her. Oh. Sometimes Alice would break the silence and speak to the firelight, which was what she was doing now. I burst into tears, she said reminiscently, and he looked at me as if he didn't know whether to pet me or leave me or make love to me. That's not a good thing. I'm going to tell myself right now. <laughs> Those are wildly different things that are not okay for a grown man to think about a grown woman. <laughs> And not know which one he's thinking of doing. She just means pitching woo. It's the original meaning of making love to me. Evidently, he has all sorts of decent instincts. Anyway, he started to leave me. And then he started to pet me. Mm -hmm. And then he started to kiss me. Wow, that's... <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm in the whole for the whole thing. But the uh -huh. order is a little strange. Okay. Uh-huh. It's it just saying it's usually the opposite, right? Kiss me, pet me, leave me, never call me. You're saying that's the that's the rare dating triple play. Yes, you, you're not doing the roundabout way of getting to third base. <laughs> yeah, this guy starts at third, goes back to second. This guy's born on third. Goes, <laughs> goes and thinks home. he hit a single. <laughs> so. So he goes back to second, uh -huh, and then there's back. a pop fly, right, okay? Pop fly. And then the infield mm -hmm. fly rule comes into effect. Yep, yep, yep. So you can't go all the way. Yep. Okay. Then there's a triple play, but then he realized he doesn't need a landline anymore. Who needs that? So <laughs> he switches just to cable Stay and up. internet, and then he gets Fios, and then he thinks, well, why don't I just cut the cord? Because I'm using Hulu Plus anyways. <laughs> and then they bone. All right. Ah, good old-fashioned lovemaking. I think I like that best, 
said Alice very seriously. He really is good looking, you know, he told the radiator. Listen, lady, we all have problems. The bed's been saying crap about me to the sink all afternoon. Has the sink ever met him? <laughs> well, they know. They think they, they're in the same circles. Same sir. Uh, I don't think they are in the same circles, though, Rob. I well, think that's the point of a house having doors. Oh, well, you should hear what the door says. The door's the biggest gossip in the whole house. <laughs> it's really the middleman of the situation. After a while, I recovered myself and he stopped kissing me. When did the chicken become the narrator? <laughs> huh. Uh, her face clouded for a moment and then lighted up. But he ate the burnt chicken, she said triumphantly. I mean, he died soon afterwards, but it was such a nice gesture. I mean, everybody that looked at that chicken w basically realized that it was a death trap. I mean, <laughs> clearly, I mean, it was like not, we're not talking regular chicken. We're talking voodoo chicken. Voodoo chicken. She doesn't look in the least like a servant. No wonder she can't cook, said Mrs. Bellers, not taking the time to puncture her sentence. Uh, is that what? Huh. Yeah. Correct. We need, to, English. we need to write a letter to Live Stories magazine in the past. <laughs> Does it have to have a certain circulation level for you to be able to tap into it? No, but I've uh, I've struck up a friendship with the uh, editor. And, uh, you know, after I get out of jail for killing a man uh, for 30 years and <laughs> fallen in love with his widow and uh i guess for some reason Natalie dormer is very attracted to me i, I can't figure it out and uh what happens <laughs> oh, i don't know done with mel gibson and then uh, pride and prejudice lady and yeah, yeah, yeah. And trying to well it was a mess it was a mess based on <laughs> based on a real story based on a true story but fucking mess I'm sure, she added firmly, there's a mystery about her. Well, she's in love with a room fixture. I mean, it's mysterious, but not mysterious, mysterious. Serious, but not mysterious. I'm in love with a radiator. Mrs. Bellers was eternally suspicious of the true status of other people. You're not away. You're not away from keyboard. You're not going to be our B. You're not in a meeting right now. I know you're not. You just blocked off your calendar. I know you came back yesterday. You're just trying to not have people reach out to you. You're in the Slack channel. I can see you are. I see it. It's stamped as red. There's nothing mysterious about her cooking, said Mr. Jones. It's rotten. That's just what he said. My word, that chap has his way with the phrase. Mr. Jones, you wicked wit. It's rotten. Oh, wow, such scandalous language. Oh, so witty. The wordplay. Mmm, it cuts like a knife. It's, uh, craptastic. <laughs> oh, you, you had me with the crap, and you brought me even more in with the tastic. It's grody. <laughs> grody. And I'm lost. Maybe she's an heiress run away from home, said Mrs. Bellers, hopefully. Maybe she cooked a meal and they drove her out, said Mr. Jones darkly. Maybe she's just crazy. I, I knew I shouldn't have let you talk me into that yellow wallpaper. Okay, here's a yellow wallpaper. Yes, it, it, it was coming. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy, I couldn't wait, Rocky. You just, you just had to well, jump out wait. with your Jane Campion uh, <laughs> or Chapin, Chapin references. Uh, the many references I have. <laughs> She's a nice girl, said Teddy Campbell, nephew to Mrs. Bellers, cousin to Mrs. Jones, opportunity to Alice. Quick draw to his unfortunate ex-girlfriends. What? <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> what? Not that I have a quick draw impression, so I don't... I always keep doing this like I'm going to... Like just off the top of my head I'm be able to do this. I'm expecting it now. I want you to have the whole head of Barra Barra crew here, and uh, I'm a little disappointed. Can you do grape ape? <laughs> sure. Who can't do grape ape? <laughs> grape ape.
Great babe. Great babe. Googly googly. He had come in with his aunt. What do you know about her? demanded Mrs. Beller suspiciously. I ate supper with her the other night, Teddy told her. My fair cousin here invited me to dinner, and when I arrived, she was out with her husband. There was a chicken on the table, and I ate it. And then I almost left it. And then I pet it, and then I kissed it, and then, well, I have regrets. And now it turns out I've got to go back to Comcast, and they've got big data caps, and oh, I shouldn't have slept with her. <laughs> I mean, wait, 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 back to the chicken. <laughs> you ate that burnt chicken. Asked Jones. Sir, I would not have you refer to my crazy new girlfriend like that. <laughs> yes. It wasn't burnt. It was just browned a little too much, said Teddy with a faraway look. Browned, he added abstractedly. <laughs> burnt, said Mr. Jones fiercely. Burnt, sir. Look, Dad, just turn on the TV so we don't have to talk, and let's all have the horrible Thanksgiving like we planned. I know, that's what everybody was hoping for, for it to be really horrible. I mean, it's not that we want it to be, it's just that we want our expectations met. That's the important thing. Alice heard the door slam once again and crept downstairs. She walked into the parlor and came face to face with Opportunity. Who, like his namesake, had never knocked twice. Well, I mean, it's for, you knock once and then, you know, maybe after a while he'll knock again. Oh yeah, no, now he just rings the bell. I mean, these days you have to ring the bell. Oh, yeah. No, no woman's going to have you if you don't ring the bell as well as not. <laughs> you really got to learn it, though. You know, it doesn't come naturally. You got you to ring that bell. You got to find it, and you got to ring it. I need a word one line, Rob. <laughs> you got to ring that bell. Ding, ding, dong. I thought you went out with them, she said. Oh, I don't like the movies, said Teddy. Neither do I, said Alice, sit by the radiator. And lo, the first hipsters appeared. They didn't like movies or music and still rode those huge penny-farthing bicycles. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't uh, own a radio. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I only have a calliope. I mean, I guess if you're into modern things, I'm more of a magic lantern. <laughs> person myself you know you know really, really these days i'm really into sitting by the radiator <laughs> I, I, yes but only artisanal radiators who are you anyway said opportunity i'm alice said alice 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 okay let me do this again rob i don't I, wait why what alice I'm Alice. Okay, I'm going to do this one more time. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm missing something. All right. Okay. All right. You're Alice. I'm Alice. I'm Alice. Let's just say, who the fuck is Alice? <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> what is that from? What is it from is a really great question. <laughs> the song Alice by Smokey was recorded in uh, 1972 released in 1976 smoky an australian band not smoky robinson no not smoky robinson it's a wistful song about a man in love with his neighbor alice who for 24 years he's had uh been carrying the torch for i guess you'd say mm -hmm. and she gets up and leaves and then he laments that for 24 years, he's been living next door to Alice. That's it? I'm supposed to feel bad because I don't get some Australian song from 1972? Around the mid-90s, uh -huh. there was a cafe called Cafe Gompi in uh, the Netherlands. Okay. Where they often played the smoky song, Living Next Door to Alice. It was common uh, that the uh, the DJ that was playing that song would turn down the volume at some point when when the narrator in the song refers to Alice, and the cafe would yell, "Alice, who the fuck is Alice?" Oh, 
They then released a version of the chat. Uh huh. Which somehow reached number one in the Netherlands. Oh my god. In 1995. Okay. Okay. And so became mm -hmm. so popular that the Australian band Smokey had to change their song that they had been singing for 20 years <laughs> to incorporate allowing the audience to yell, Alice, Alice, who the fuck is Alice? Oh, my God. Every time that they play that song from now on. I like This must be how Neil Diamond feels about Sweet Caroline and the bomb, bomb, bomb part. Bomb, bomb, bomb is not usually considered a... You know, four letter word in most countries. <laughs> yeah, but this is Australia. I mean, these guys are probably saying fuck it like three or four. So when you ask me, yes, what is who the fuck is Alice? Great question, Rob. Great question. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm Teddy, said Opportunity. Yes. Teddy. Teddy Opportunity. I have a show coming up on A and E about running businesses. What's that? Shark Tank? Never heard of it. <laughs> Well, he needs a twin. Mm -hmm. Nephew to Mrs. Bellers. Mrs. Bellers, Mrs. Bellers. Who the fuck is Mrs. Bellers? <laughs> who who the fuck is Mrs. Bellers? You are a runaway heiress. I am always kind to runaway heiresses when I locate them. Are you? said Alice. You were kind to me the other evening. Nicer than that bitchy radiator. I swear to God, I'm so over his crap. Okay, I can see this is a rebound uh, situation, or at least a reheating situation. <laughs> Was I kind to one then, demanded Tenny. Almost, murmured the girl. I ran away from home because my aunt wanted me to marry a wealthy undertaker. What an ideal, said Teddy. I'm in the advertising business myself. Ah, so you must be a stand-up guy who never lies and believes sincerely in the intelligence of the American people. Yeah, sure, and it'll go some weird places, and then uh, you'll think, like, wow, they're really getting pretty full of themselves. But then uh, the last episode kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Teddy Opportunity <laughs> goes off and uh, yes. uh, <laughs> joins a commune. Well, he wasn't really Teddy Opportunity, Rob. He he took the name of Teddy Opportunity <laughs> from a guy yeah, who died in the one. war. Yeah, it's World War One. Teddy Opportunity was in yeah. a, was in sure, a trench. That, that made sense. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, I went up and talked to the radiator about Alice. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God? Or, wait. Is God wait the minute. narrator? What? The narrator went up to talk yeah. to the radiator? Okay, hold on. Um, yesterday I went up and talked to the radiator about Alice. Yeah, the, the narrator. What? Yeah. It's like Columbo. Excuse me, I mean, Mr. Radiator. <laughs> I got one more question for you. What? But Teddy was just talking. There's not a line. There's not a horizontal rule or anything. No, they just jump around in this thing. I miss her very much. Oh, sorry. I forgot. I'm... This is the radiator talk. Yeah. I miss her very much. He told me <laughs> with a sigh. She was such a nice girl. She used to tell me all sorts of interesting things about herself. About her school days, and her college days, and her wealthy and stingy aunt who wanted her to marry some man she didn't want to marry. And how she ran away and became a stenographer and lost her job when she confused the words lost and found in a letter. And anyway, that's why we went to war with the Iraq. So the WMDs were real, and she was going around. Never mind, I'll save that story till the subpoena. How do you confuse the words lost and found? Well, Alan, I think you forgot that she's very pretty. Sorry, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Right. Oh, you know, I forgot she was nice, too. Yep, yep, and petite. Yep. Well, just small, probably. Well, yeah, probably, I think. Yeah. Then she went out to work in a factory, but lost out there, too. She was such a nice girl, said the radiator, but not very practical. That was one of her charms, he noted as an afterthought. I, I think it means one of her accomplishments. I watched her accomplish all night. Oh, no. She married a cousin of the Joneses, he went on after a while. 
I'm sorry. Just give me a minute here. I wasn't. I didn't realize there'd be a whole documentary crew, and uh, uh, I was. Uh, I was gonna have some maintenance done, and they were gonna. They were gonna get the hard water out of me. And sorry, I just gotta. <clears throat> Does anyone have a key? Anyone have a key here? I, I could. Excuse I me. could use some uh, loosening. Know what I mean? Uh, anyone? <clears throat> just uh, <clears throat> right, let me get a little. <clears throat> get this. A little Speak bit of the good out. stuff here. <clears throat> Okay, back oh, yeah, yeah back, back to the history of this girl who lived with me for a bit. Okay, maybe it did. Uh, I don't know. It was quite a shock to them, as nobody in the family had ever married a servant girl. I never heard of such a thing. That's me. That's me pretending, I guess, to be one of the humans. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez, wow, we we are far afield here, people. We are. Uh, okay, I heard Mrs. Beller say when he told them about it, but but he married her. Wait, Alan, you know what that means, right? What? Now she's Mrs. Mrs. Jones! Oh, you mean Mrs. Bellers? Oh. Yes. Damn it! I forgot how names work. Ugh. Well, no. I mean, no, 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 it's Mrs. Just... Are they reconciled? The Joneses? The Bellers and the bridal couple, I asked. Quite, said the radiator. Her aunt was so glad to hear she was safely married that she forgave her everything. At least that's what I heard. But these days the house isn't what it was. You know, we we got no cook, can't get one. It's It's awful. I've had to live on nothing but water and rat feces for years. Mm. Mm -hmm. By the way, you don't happen to have any uh, rat feces on you, do you? Of course. I... <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> it's 1919. We're covered in it. <laughs> so everybody is happy, I said. Everybody but Mrs. Jones, said Mrs. the radiator. Mrs. Jones. When she heard that Teddy was going to marry Alice, she used to sit just where you were standing she said and just as she was getting trained <laughs> i don't think she's over it even now cooks are hard to get these days you know yeah cooks good short stories many many things are hard to get these days apparently oh some kind of narration structure that just doesn't fall <laughs> totally apart <laughs> oh boy at that moment there was a swish in the hallway, and in came Alice, sparkling, fur, gay. Oh. She did not see me simply because I have the fascinating power of making myself invisible when I want to do so. <laughs> what the fuck? Which is usually, to be fair, in people's bedrooms. This is a riddle, right? <laughs> and, and he's steam, right? I don't know. Who is he? Who is he's... I in this? Why does he not... He's time? He's a clock? I don't know. She slipped over to the old radiator and sat down on the floor and felt it with her hands. Oh, boy. Dear old thing, she said. Dear old thing, said Alice, sit by the radiator. And there was a confused sputter heard. The sort that radiators make when they are half crying and half laughing oh it was a joyful reunion sparks flew steam burned and they both exploded the end i knew it well that uh that radiator Seems like a good guy. <laughs> I mean, he's already he knows how to keep a secret. I mean, until the the documentary crew came and then <laughs> it did spill he everything. Spilled it. It was kind of weird. It was kind of like The Office. It's like, okay, yeah, you can kind of make the gym face at him, but when you try to have the radiator sleep with Jenna Fisher, it doesn't like <laughs> people aren't down with that. No, no. Yeah. Or like in Parks and Rec, who are they talking to at all? Little Sebastian, right? <laughs> Little Sebastian. Fair enough. We're all, all of us are in some way. I'm waiting for you to wrap up that story with a, a nice little moral to help me come to terms with it. So uh, what what do you think it is, Rob? Well, Alan, I, I think it's it's pretty clear. It's a classic moral for our time. Uh, the moral is that you shouldn't underestimate anyone. 
no matter how lowly their class, how mm-hmm. terrible they are at their job, mm-hmm. or how much of a void of personality they may have. Uh, remember what the good book teaches us, Alan. The boring, kind of dumb, and possibly insane will inherit the earth. I think that's what QAnon is hoping for. Yeah, you're right, Rob. <laughs> that's, that covers it right there. It, boring mm. is questionable, but everything else nailed it. I'm pretty bored. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't, um, I'm going to go with that, Rob, and I'm going to take that to heart and I'm not going to look any deeper into this. (laughs) Don't look back, Alan. You'll turn into a pillar of burnt chicken. Yes. But will I eat it? That's the question, Rob. Will I eat it? Tell you who would eat it. That radiator. He wanted a wanted it insatiable well uh, thank you all for joining us here uh with the a live story the the most live story we could have had <laughs>